meeting started. Yeah, it's no worries. Was not responding, so that's kind of where I was at. I just want to make sure it wasn't just me. I'm admitting all now. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, is my volume working this time on this computer? Yay. It is about 40%. Am I going green? I think Melissa might have said something. You look better this time, Carrie. <laughs> no, nothing weird going on in the background. Looks good. Oh, it looks okay. All right. I yeah. tried. Tried it on another meeting and it still okay. So I don't know. Okay. Probably because I had COVID last time. Maybe I was literally green. <laughs> okay, you're all set. Here you go. Oh, no, it's going green again. Thank you. <clears throat> Courtney, did you say the trick was to make it not auto adjust for light? If it auto adjusts for light or something, it can mess up the color? I don't think you heard that from me, not to say that that's not the truth. Uh, I thought you said something about low light, a low light setting last time. Oh, hang on, let me look. I do have adjust for low light. I wonder if I should remove, let's try without. Is that better? I didn't feel like it was weird during my, I used it for the health board meeting and it wasn't. Was that during the day or at night? No, about the same time, five o'clock. I have mine set on adjust for low light auto, so it's automatic, um, but it is on. Do we just need Tori? Does Faith have everybody's numbers now? <coughs> she does? Okay. She does. Oh, yeah. I'm the only one home tonight, so I can move around. Has she reached out to Tori yet? She's in the process. Thanks, Faith.
that came better. That's green. Hi, Tori. All right, do we have many people in the waiting room? Are we ready to get this party started? Uh, looks like we have one guest so far. There was a couple more, but they disappeared. So hopefully they'll come back. Do you wanna give it a minute, Michael, or do you wanna, are you ready? I think we can just start. That way they can come in automatically. I think they probably were wondering why we had started. Okay. So everyone is admitted at this time. All right. So this Livingston City Commission meeting is called to order. Roll call, please. Chair Nunes. Here. Vice Chair Kale. Here. Commissioner Freeman. Here. Commissioner Schwartz. Present. Commissioner Lyons. All right, could you guys hear Commissioner Lyons? This is volume working for you. No. Mm. Now we got you. Okay, just wanted to make sure before we really get rolling. All right, so the first thing up on the agenda is public, general public comment. So individuals are reminded that public comments should be limited to items over which the city commission has supervision control jurisdiction or advisory power. So if you are here and want to give general public comment on anything that's not on the agenda, please let us know now. <clears throat> All right, I don't hear anything. So on tonight's agenda, we have four consent items. No, pro no proclamations and no scheduled public comments. One public hearing, no ordinances, five resolutions and one action item. So let's jump in. Um, for the consent items, I would be happy to entertain a motion. I just, before, before we get rolling, I wanna remind everybody that it's, well, I'll wait, I'll wait till we get to public hearing because the consent items we do differently. But if you have anything you want pulled for discussion commissioners, you can pull those items and we can talk about them first. Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion for the four consent items. Mm -hmm. Can we make a motion on it? Uh, yes, please. Make a motion. We approve uh, consent items A, B, C, D. I'll second. A motion by Friedman and a second by Schwartz. Roll call, please. Chair Nudes. Four. Vice Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner May or Commissioner Schwartz. <laughs> Four. <Both habits. laughs> Commissioner Ryan's. Four. Motion passes. So the next agenda on our item is a public hearing and I'm just gonna walk through the process um, to remind us what the commission policy is. So first, 
we'll get a staff report and then the commissioners can ask clarifying questions. Then we'll take a motion. We can discuss it after there's a motion on the table. After our discussion, we can open it to public comment, have a final discussion and then vote. So tonight's public hearing is on resolution 5010, a resolution of the city of Livingston, Montana, annexing certain land on petition of Christopher Lauren. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So this is uh, the, the public hearing on this issue. You, you moved it to a public hearing two meetings ago. Uh, so this is the final time this will be seen in front of the public. Um, it is a half blockish area on the end of Love's Lane, um, right on the city county border where it currently exists, uh, just behind the the townhomes on uh, behind Albertsons. So I will turn it over to Matthew for his staff report, although I don't think he's on, so we're missing him. So I'll give you his staff report. Uh, in general, well, there it is. There it is. Go ahead, Matthew. I'm here. Um, so again, this is a second reading. Uh, just as the two new commissioners have not uh, heard this item, I will go through it quickly. Uh, as the city manager mentioned, it is the property um, directly behind the condos on Loves Lane, behind Albertsons. Uh, it would be a, a small extension to the city limits at that point. Um, the applicant has stated in his application that he would like to build uh, basically two multifamily units on the property, which would require water and sewer extensions. Um, and to do so, he would be required to annex into the city. As part of state law and this annexation, we would also need to annex the roads adjacent to the parcel, which would be uh, Loves Lane up to the parcel line and then Miller Drive to the west, uh, basically up to the parcel line as well there. So not all of Miller Drive, just the Miller Drive adjacent to the property. Um, currently it's being used as single family housing. You can see on the aerial image there that there's a single family home and a garage on the parcel. The area is shown as medium density residential in the extraterritorial jurisdiction uh, future land use map in the growth policy. Based on what the applicant has stated, it, it would meet the densities that are, are listed for that medium density residential. Um, obviously an annexation does not hold the applicant to any specific development. Uh, zoning would do that. The process after this would be to zone the parcel. So you would see this again um, and it would go to zoning commission. All of the neighbors would be noticed uh, under our ordinances. Uh, the neighboring parcels to the east are all zoned R3. So that is something to note. Um, and if the applicant were to uh, do what he is saying he would like to do on the parcel in his application, he would need to zone his parcel R3 as R2 does not allow multifamily beyond duplexes. Uh, some other things to note from the growth policy, uh, as you all are aware, it does strongly promote infill. This is a slight expansion to the city limits that is in an already developed area, which is why it's been shown as medium density residential on the future land use map. There are uh, single family homes predominantly in the area and then within the adjacent city parcels, again, it's multifamily residential. There is also a uh, marijuana business across the street as well. So that's something to note. And there should be no impact to uh, the environment or environmental resources on this parcel. Again, it's already developed and it is quite adjacent to Interstate 90. Uh, it's at about 200 feet or so from the embankment there. So staff is recommending that uh, the city commission does approve this annexation. Uh, it was moved on unanimously from the last hearing to this public hearing. Uh, and just one final time, it will, if it were to be approved, it would have to uh, come in again for uh, a zoning hearing. So that would go to the zoning commission and there'd be two, there'd be two city commission hearings uh, and our city zoning ordinance does require that we notice everyone one within 300 feet of that uh, zoning uh, with that zoning application. So this would not be the last time you would see this problem. And I am happy to answer any questions you may have. And I should also note that the applicant is uh, in the meeting too if you do have questions for him. Thanks, Matthew. Commissioners, do any of you have clarifying questions for staff? Vice Chair Keel. Matthew, the the lots that are looking at the picture to the 
to the right the that are with the purple around them those have condos on there already don't they that it shows empty now but those are built with condos in both those lots is that correct yeah, so there's they're either built or they're under construction currently. The aerial is a bit out of date, um, but that development, which used to be called Eagles Landing, and I think they're now calling the flats at Yellowstone Bend, uh, the the plan is to build out that entire. Uh, there are basically two parcels there with with the condos that you can kind of see on the the furthest east aerial. There, you expect that same development pattern throughout, and I do believe, if not all of them, almost all of them are completed or under construction at this point. Thank you. Vice Chair Kale, do you have any other questions? No, I yield. Okay. Anybody else? All right. So next up, if you want to discuss this and vote on it, now I'll entertain a motion. Anybody want to make a motion on resolution 5010? Um, Madam Chair. Yep. Um, just a clarifying question. Um, uh, making a motion and a second before public comment, just it makes it sound like it's a foregone conclusion, even though you have to, a motion has to be in the affirmative. Um, I'm just wondering why we're doing it this way. Regard, yeah, I know the manual says that, but. Um, it's almost like public comment um, pointless at that point if we've got a motion to approve. Does that, do I make any sense? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. I, I um, went back to the manual and I was wondering why we did it that way too. I think some of this, this is in 2018, 2019. I will ask Mr. Cardus if he or other staff like Courtney want to address why we chose the order that we chose and what the process would be if we wanted to update that. You want me to weigh in or would you like to do that, Mr. City Manager? So there is a really good reason for this. And um, one of the reasons is that we always vote in the affirmative. We always make the motion in the affirmative. So the way that the motion is made doesn't really change, but what we're actually making a motion about and then asking for public comment on, it gives the public more notice and clearer notice, we hope, about what the discussion should be about when we're making the motion and then directing the public comment to what the actual terms of the motion on are. So it, it hopefully makes it more clear for the public what it is that the discussion topic is and what the what the vote is going to be because not everybody has read the agenda not everybody has read the um the resolutions or the the title documents that are in the um the packet and while it's available online and certainly there are, there are, device connected. There are other copies uh available for people if they want them um having that additional information at the front end um is helpful for moving that that motion forward and making sure that the the comments are more narrowly tailored to what's actually happening. No Bluetooth device connected. Searching. Hearing some. Hey, that answers my question, um, Chair. Um, um, sounds good to me. I just uh, want that helps clarify it. Um, because I didn't know why either. So okay. good. But in light of that fact, uh, I will make a motion to approve. Resolution 5010. Second. So we have a motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. Thank you also, Commissioner Schwartz, for your question. I think it's good to revisit why we do things the way we do them. So now we'll open it up to um, commission discussion. So if we wanna talk about it as a commission before public comment, we can. Anybody has anything they wanna say? Let me know. It's connected to And I'm hearing something through faith speaker, just so you know. Um, Sorry. They're working yeah. on getting that fixed. So it'll be uh, those of right. us 
on the other side for a few minutes until they do that. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm gonna open it to public comment. So if there's anyone here that wants to comment on this agenda item from the public, please put your name in the chat or raise your hand or come off mute, whatever works for you. Any public comment on resolution 5010? Oh, and I need to say that this is opening the public hearing. I caught myself there. The public hearing is open for resolution 5010. All right, I don't see any comment. I don't see anything in the chat. So this public hearing is closed. And now we'll um, go back to the commission. Does anybody wanna say anything on this agenda item before we vote? Well, Commissioner well, Lyons. Uh, it seems to me, while it's not necessarily the most perfectly cut and dry case of infill development, it seems like a good example um, where it's a part of the city that already has that kind of um, higher density development. Um, it, condos are on the affordable side of our relatively unaffordable housing stock at the moment. Um, and so I think it kind of fits within the growth policy and also the, <clears throat> the housing action plan. Um, so in my opinion, this, this seems to comport with, with um, with documents that we've already reviewed extensively, so. Thank you. And I just have um, one question, a clarifying question. Um, so Matthew, when you say that everyone within a certain radius is gonna be notified, I assume you don't mean residents, but that you mean landowners, is that correct? Yeah, so basically um, what the process when we have an application for a zoning amendment, uh, our ordinance requires that we send a certified mailer to every property within 300 feet. Uh, so basically I'll use our GIS software to create a 300 foot radius from the property. And then we will use the property owner data, which comes from Montana Cadastral. So each property owner that's listed in Cadastral will get a notice uh, that there's a zoning action happening within 300 feet of their property. Thank you. And I also have actually one other question. Um, I think I might have asked this last time, but did Public Works weigh in on if growth in this part of town is supported by existing infrastructure like water mains and sewer lines? So I spoke with Public Works. Uh, they didn't have any particular concerns. I specifically asked them um, about the roads. Obviously, when you're adding linear footage of roads, you want to make sure Public Works is okay with that. Um, they didn't have any issue if we do have development on the parcel. Uh, specifically the development that the applicant is speaking of, we will have to go through a site plan review process with that. Um, they will have to ensure that they have proper water and sewer before they build anything, uh, and at least their half of the road will have to be improved. On Love's Lane, uh, there will be a, a discussion depending on what the development looks like in the end, what, what we need to do with Miller Drive, if anything. Um, I, Shannon did note that the neighboring parcel to the south, despite not being in the city, does have an agreement with the city to have water and sewer. So there is infrastructure uh, already, but it's very likely that the infrastructure would be extended up Love's Lane uh, as the road gets improved so we don't double up uh, digging up the road there. So um, I did discuss it with them, but it'll be discussed in more detail uh, when, when we have any sort of development. Thank you. And just because you mentioned site plan review, I want to make sure that um, folks know that that's an internal executive branch process, right? It's not gonna be something that goes through a public hearing or even the planning board, but but if, if the land's not subdivided, if they work with staff, developers work with staff directly. Correct, and just for the new commissioner's knowledge, um, with site plan review, that's a, a function that the planning department undertakes, but it also goes to comment um, from public works and generally the fire department as well to ensure that we have proper infrastructure and that they have proper ingress, ingress, egress for uh, fire trucks 
uh, and other emergency vehicles. So um, while planning department coordinates that, there's a lot of input from other agencies on it, and we are allowed to condition those approvals. Uh, so we can require things like uh, sidewalks or specific infrastructure pieces as we find important with any specific development. Uh, so it's basically a higher level review than what you would have with a, a smaller project, but it is all internal and it's, it's all done and approved by staff. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion. We have a motion on the table and we have a second. We've discussed it, gone through the public hearing, so now we're ready for a vote. I'm not sure um, if Faith is still on. Courtney, for a I got call. this. Are you I'm ready? here. Okay. I'm here. Okay, so okay. We'll call. go ahead. We'll call, please. Chair Nudes? Yes. Vice Chair Kale? Yes. Commissioner Freeman? Four. Commissioner Schwartz? Four. Commissioner Lyons? Four. Motion passes. Next up on our agenda is resolution 5008. A resolution of the city commission of the city of Livingston, Montana, setting the fees for false alarms for police and fire protection. Mr. Cardus, if, if you're here, otherwise, Courtney, can you please help out? Absolutely. Let me shift my screens a little bit here. Okay. So what this is doing is it's just aligning the uh, false alarm fees for both police and fire. They were different. Um, and this just makes them the same um, for each of the first, second, third, and fourth or subsequent alarm fees. And it aligns those with uh, police and fire so that they're the same for everybody. There we go. Commissioners, does anybody have any questions? Commissioner Lyons. I wonder if there are any policies Relating, I wonder what the process is like for collection. And I'm I basically, I'm curious about compounding fees. I'm aware that oftentimes um, low income families can get into, into trouble with compounding fees. Um, and so I'm wondering what that looks like in this case. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Lyons. We talked a little bit about this at, on a previous agenda item last year. So Courtney, could you help clarify who this like what, what problem this is solving? So for the most part, uh, and I will direct this directly to, to Commissioner Lyons, for the most part, this is not something that affects uh, lower income citizens because this requires that somebody has a fire alarm system that reports to an alarm company. And a lot of folks in that uh, category don't have those systems. Um, this is designed to be both flexible and responsive and to allow for uh, zero fee for the first time. Um, and also it's within the quarter. So if you have one false alarm every three months, you're not gonna end up being charged. But if you've got 10 false alarms a month and you're not working with your provider to get those problems fixed and we're responding repeatedly uh, with both police and fire response to those false alarms. That's a, an awful lot of uh, work on our part for both city fire and city police to respond to stage, to make sure that they're responding appropriately to those alarms and then to have them be false every time. Um, so it, it allows for a staggered um, fee schedule and also uh, is there some built in, um, we understand you're trying your best. We don't wanna, um, be too hard on you. And so it's really pretty forgiving. Um, and at the same time holds folks accountable. Because of the, the disparate fee structure, there wasn't a lot of um, accountability because they were so different. And the dispatch was basically in charge of recording those and then getting information to the chief so that they could follow up on those if they were going to ask for uh, payment for those fees. And while it didn't happen very often, it was 
it was happening for um, what I would call egregious violators, which we thankfully don't have very many of. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't being imposed um, part of the time because the fee structure was not consistent. Thank you for that clarification. Um, I guess, however, part part of my question wasn't totally answered, and I'm curious. I'm basically curious if, and th this may or may not pertain to this fee, and maybe therefore it's a discussion for another time. Um, but I'm I'm curious if the fees compound if not paid, and if can, if they can aggregate into something that um, at some point becomes uh, a, a larger financial burden. I think I understand, but let me reflect this back to you to make sure I'm understanding where you're coming from. Um, so let's say we, we equate it to parking tickets. And if somebody gets a large number of par parking tickets and they don't pay them, they get sent to collections, which is an, an additional financial burden because of the collection cost. Um, and so that is not what we're doing with these fees at this time. Okay, thank you, I yield. Thank you, and thank you for the question, and thank you, Courtney. Any other questions? All right, so next is public comment on resolution. No, it isn't public comment. We did clarifying questions. Now I'll take a motion on resolution 5013. Nope, not on 5013, sorry, 5008. 5008, yep. Sorry, I was on the wrong page. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve resolution 5008. Second. <clears throat> motion by Short, second by Friedman. And now we can discuss. Does anyone have anything they want to discuss about this agenda item? All right, I'm going to open it to public comment. Public, do you have any comments on resolution 5008? <laughs> Another small meeting, a small quiet meeting. All right, close it up, close up public comment. So commissioners, anybody have anything else they wanna discuss? I will say that I appreciate that some of these things are moving out of ordinances over into resolutions. Um, so things can be dealt with more quickly by staff as changes need to be made. Um, and I believe that's why this one came before us when it did. So I like to see these things moving their way into resolutions. No other comments? Roll call, please. Chair Nance. Yes. Vice Chair Kale. Yes. Commissioner Freeman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. Next on our agenda is resolution 5013, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Livingston, Montana, establishing a temporary ad hoc committee to review the mission, mission vision, values, and goals of the City of Livingston Organizational Strategic Plan 2019 through 2024. Mr. Cardus, if you're here, otherwise, Courtney, can you please help? I will take a stab at this. Um, this is a resolution um, establishing this ad hoc committee. This is the committee that the commission asked for, for public uh, comment into the mission, vision, values statements. Um, the questions for, for the commission uh, tonight are um, how many, um, and I think the recommendation is for either five or seven, uh, certainly an odd number, um, and the number of commissioners which could be up to two to keep you from having a quorum, which would require notice of the meetings. And then if you wanna come up with a, uh, a name for the committee, uh, you certainly can, or we can do that. Uh, we certainly have pretty direct um, organization and uh, direction for what it is that this committee is going to do and in what time period. So the recruitment will be open for 30 days and then the uh, ad hoc committee will have a written recommendation back to the city commission within 90 days after they're created. Um, if they're recommending any changes to the mission vision value statement, 
Um, does the commission have any questions or any thoughts about uh, the number of people, citizens and commissioners that they would like on the committee? So I just wanna start by saying we, um, for the newer commissioners, we had talked about this at a previous commission meeting last year um, and how we, the commission, didn't necessarily think wordsmithing at city commission meetings was the best way to move forward with updating the language portion of the strategic plan. Um, and this is a way for the community to directly engage with some of our foundational documents. And that, that's, what, that's what happened and preceded this to get us to the point of having this conversation. So having said that, um, do you all have any clarifying questions about the process or this item before we um, move it to a motion? Vice Chair Kale. Just a clarifying question. Um, so the public citizen would apply for this. We put out some sort of a statement or advertisement for people to apply for this. And then who's who's making the choice of those once we get those those applications? Are we recommendations to us to make that to make those choice choices or does the uh, city staff do that? This Courtney, is set up you, thank you. This is set up so that staff uh, assigns those those committee folks. Um, I imagine that we're gonna have I would guess enough applications to seat your committee, but it's not going to be an extraordinary amount. Um, you know, we're not going to have to pick from 30 people. We might have to pick from 10. Um, and certainly we could come back to the commission and have the commission approve that recommendation if that's what you'd like to do, or we can just go ahead and um, assign them and implement that. It's going to put your implementation of the recommendation out at least another 15 to 30 days uh, for commission approval by the time we go through that process. So it's not as speedy, but certainly you have more control over it that way. Vice Chair Kale, can I ask a question just based on your... Please. Thanks for the question. So um, Courtney, I don't see that in here. Can you point me to where it says it in the resolution? Because it does usually go through the commission for commission boards, the appointment of members. So, so, um, so it is not, it's not specifically in the resolution. Um, where I think it comes up is because this is a recommendation to the commission about any changes to mission vision values. That is what is gonna come back to you for your approval. Um, and the uh, um, assignment of seats on a committee uh, can certainly come back to you folks under the, under the city code, um, but the uh, city manager has uh, the obligation to direct uh, committees and he can create those committees um, if he needs to. This is, this is one of those that you're asking to be created. Um, so we can do it through your approval or we can go through the city manager's assignment of those people to that, that committee. Right, thank you. So that's what I had requested was that this one goes through the commission when I um, talked about this last year. So um, I'm gonna wait since we're not, we don't have a motion to discuss that further. But does anyone else, Vice Chair Kale, do you have any other questions you have the floor? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't have any questions, any more um, clarifying questions. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else have technical questions before a motion? All right, so I'll entertain a motion on resolution 5013. Does anyone? Need to I make a motion we pass resolution 5013. Is there a second? I can I can I make have a, I have a quick question in sure. the midst of all this? Do we need to establish the number of citizens and the number of commissioners um, before we make the motion? 
you can do it before or after uh, because there are blank spaces in it right now that you're gonna have to fill or direct us to fill. Thanks, Courtney. Thanks for the question, Vice Chair. So we have a motion by Friedman. Is there a second? A second. So motion by Friedman, second by Lyons. So now we can start discussing the number, the process, if we want it to go through the commission. So the number of public on it, the number of commissioners on it, and if we want these applications to go before the commission for selection for this ad hoc committee, which commissioner wants to go first? I don't know, you kind of lost me here. <laughs> so what you... we're talking about this committee to review the strategic plan. Yeah. We need to decide how many people we want on it. That's the first thing. Do we want five members of the public or seven members of the public? I do. That's the first thing we need to decide. Why is that necessary? Because it's a new committee. It's a, it's a temporary committee that has not existed before. And we just have to put the boundaries around it and decide how many people are gonna be on this committee that's temporary. Most of our committees have five to seven people. So that's what the city staff is recommending. And an odd number because that and makes that, votes easier. Right, and that can be including or in addition to any commission or commissioners that you want on that uh, committee. So who wants to go first? Or I can start calling on people, but I would rather that you volunteer. Oh, I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, Thank you. Does Commissioner Friedman yield? Yeah, what, uh, <laughs> you still lost me, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to fill you in here. I think I, I can clarify it. Um, having participated in the, uh, um, the original st strategic plan, um, public participation. I think we had at the most three from the public. Um, so basing that, I would, I think I would try to limit the number to five from the public and it'd be nice to have two commissioners. That's my thoughts on that. I yield. Thank you for that feedback and for getting us started. Commissioner Schwartz. Other commissioners? Vice Chair? I, I would just suggest that I always think on some of these committees, less is more. So, I mean, the more people we get, sometimes the more unwieldy these projects can be. So, you know, if it's five as a total on the, on the, um, on the committee, I think that would be fine too. If we think we're not gonna, if we're gonna have a hard time getting folks to participate. Thank you. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, Commissioner Schwartz, would it, what is your suggestion of, of two commissioners more important? Or um, so, you know, if we were to do five, would we wanna do four public and one one commissioner, or would we want to do three public and two commissioners? Um, I don't have a feeling on it, but I'm just curious if we were to re reduce it down to five, what would be your preference, Commissioner Schwartz? Um, that's a good question. Um, um, the commission is really, really involved in um, implementing the strategic plan. So I think, you know, I would weigh for, you know, still two commissioners, um, I understand. Um, I agree with Carrie, you know, recruitment might be hard, but um, it's been what, um, four years since we did this or five years, five years now, um, maybe the participation will be better. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I agree with Carrie, less is more, but I'd still like to see two commissioners on it. And that way it's noticed and the public can um, would be um, allowed to attend. 
Thank you, Ayu. Back to Tori. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Commissioner Schwartz. I I appreciate um, the sentiment that you know we're going to be a huge part in implementing that strategic plan, and so it, it does make sense to have a, a strong commission voice on that committee. Um, so I, I, I'm I'm with you on the points you've made, and I, I yield. Does anyone else have anything that they want to say about the number of board members? Otherwise, I agree. I'll say I agree. Um, Commissioner Schwartz, thank you for that. You, um, I think that you're spot on that we had deep engagement from the people that came, but they were not our biggest meetings. I do expect that we'll have people that will be interested now that the public understands how this document's used. And I also agree with you that it's a good idea to have commissioners on um, to keep, I think also to keep it on the track that's most useful for the commission and make sure that we're getting what we need in terms of updates. Since we've talked about things like adding another value statement, um, I know the former chair, Darrell Hoagland had mentioned, had brought up that idea. So I'd wanna make sure it falls in line with um, the work that we're doing as a commission. But if there's no other comments on that, I want to open it to public comment before we before we tighten up the resolution for a vote. Okay, so I'm going to open it to public comment. Is there anyone here that wants to comment? Anyone from the public on resolution 5013? Please put your name in the chat or come off mute. Any public comment? I don't see anyone either. Thank you, Faith. Okay, so back to the commission. So let's finalize our discussion so we know what we're voting on. So it sounds like um, three citizen members and two city commission members is what we've discussed with a total of five people on the ad hoc committee. And it needs a name. We could call it something very descriptive like the strategic plan update committee with the year's date, 2019 to 2024, so that if we ever do this again in the future, the name won't be replicated. Any other suggestions? Or I'm open to staff suggestions too on what an, what an appropriate name might be for an ad hoc committee. Courtney, do you have any suggestions? The mission vision values are the guiding principles of the strategic plan. Um, and that's what you're looking at reviewing. So certainly you could uh, do something like that. But any name that you give it will get us where we need to be. It'll be it'll be good. So we could call it like. Tab five awesome. sounds good. What's that? Tab five. Tab five, babe. Yeah. Tab good. five, 2020, Do you want to do you want to formalize that in an amendment to the? <laughs> no. Okay. No other suggestions. This is your big chance, everybody. Get the process going. <laughs> okay. So Courtney, what did you suggest? Um, your guiding principles for your strategic plan committee. Okay. Thank you. There's a couple other things. Do, does anyone else have things feedback on this? There's a couple other things I would like to update on this resolution. Suggestions I wanna make. So I do want it to come before the commission because that's what we discussed last year was the applications coming before the commission. 
I'd love to hear if other commissions, commissioners agree or disagree with that. And then also, um, I, there's just a couple tweaks I would add in the text. Can you screen share the resolution, Courtney, please? Do you have that ability? Okay. I'm on page 42 of the agenda. The 42 on the corner of the document. Okay, cool. So it's the one, two, three, four, fifth paragraph down where it says, whereas city administration. So I would like, and this is, these suggestions I'm making are based on previous conversations that the last commission had about the strategic plan. So I would add a couple of phrases. So I would have it say, whereas city administration having knowledge of city operations, functions, funding, legal liabilities is tasked with, insert the word recommending, the planning, implementation, and execution of the updated statements. So I'd add the word recommending there. And then the last part of the sentence, shall develop the strategies and actions within the strategic plan with approval of the commission. And the reason that I would update those things is to make it more accurately for, reflect the process and the discussions that we've had about the strategic plan. Thank you, you can stop screen sharing now, thank you. So I'm not sure if I would need to make a motion to amend the resolution. Courtney, do I need to amend that text? Okay. Yes, as well as adding the um, number of uh, commissioners and citizens uh, and the name of the committee. If you'd like to do that, you can do it all at once. I'm gonna say it out loud once again, since chairs don't typically don't make the motions. Um, so if I'm going through the document, it would say that we can, the membership will consist of three citizens and two city commissioners. And whereas this ad hoc committee will be known as guiding principles for strategic plan committee. And then the text amendments I would make would be in the fifth paragraph and have it say is tasked with recommending the planning And near the end of the sentence, shall develop the strategies and actions within the strategic plan with approval of the commission. So those would be my recommendations for an amendment. Before we move forward with that, um, Courtney, perhaps you can help us with this. Do we also need to add into this that the commission will choose or finalize the recommendations of the three citizens. Is that, that's what you had said before, correct, Chair Newt? Yes. Um, that doesn't necessarily need to be amended in the resolution. That's your direction to us and we will certainly do as you direct. So it doesn't need to be a formal uh, amendment. Um, you could certainly put it in there, but you don't need to. Um, what we would next need would be um, a second to the amendment and then a vote on the amendment to the motion and then a vote on the motion when you're ready. We need to do a vote on that. We need to have a motion for amendment first. Right, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. I, I, ahead, can that, I can make that motion if we feel that we're ready. Does anyone have anyone else, anything else they wanna say before another motion? All right. Uh, I make a motion that we amend the first motion um, for resolution 5013 with the following in paradise in paragraph two, whereas the ad hoc committee membership will consist of three citizens and two commissioners and moving into paragraph three, whereas this ad hoc committee will be known as guiding principles for strategic plan committee. <coughs> Moving to par paragraph five, whereas city administra administration having knowledge of city operations functions, funding, legal liability is tasked with edit, recommending the planning, implementation, and execution of the updated statements shall develop the strategies, actions within the strategic plan with approval of the commission. 
for a second. I'll second. So an amendment, a motion to amend, motion by Kale and a second by Lyons. So now we're gonna um, open it to public comment for the motion and the amendment to the motion. So if anyone is here from the public and wants to give comment on resolution 5013, <coughs> now is your chance. Please come off mute or put your name in the chat. Another quiet meeting. No public comment? All right, public comment is closed. And now we'll move back to commission discussion. Um, if there's anything else to discuss, does anyone have anything they wanna say before we vote? All right, so first up, we're gonna vote on the amendment. So that was just the changes that Vice Chair Kale said. Roll call, please. Go Chair Nunes? Yes. Vice Chair Kale? Yes. Commissioner Friedman? Four. Commissioner Schwartz? Four. Commissioner Lyons? Four. The motion to amend passes, and now we'll vote on the original motion. Roll call, please. Commission Chair Nunes? Four. Vice Chair Kale? Four. Commissioner Friedman? Four. Commissioner Schwartz? Four. Commissioner Lyons? Four. Motion passes. Um, thank you, and we'll look forward to receiving the applications and discussing appointment of commissioners um, in a future meeting. Next up on the agenda is resolution 5014. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Livingston, Montana, authorizing the City Manager to sign a Memorandum of Understanding with Park County and Montana State University Extension for the economic development position within Park County for a term of 18 months. Mr. Cardus, welcome back. Or Courtney, whoever's up. Thank you. I think I'm back if you can hear me. Um, so this... This resolution is for um, an alteration to the agreement that the city has had with the with Park County and the Extension Office on the Economic Development Agent position. Uh, that agreement has existed for quite a while since before I I was in this position, so it has existed for at least five years, I think, longer. Um, it was a the position that Katie Weaver um, has historically filled until this year. Uh, what is changing about the agreement is the fact that the uh, Extension office is participating to a much higher level than they have in the past. Um, in the past, they've been really just responsible for office supplies and some other um, rent issues, but they have updated their agreement to basically provide a third of the funding for the position. So you can see on page 48 of the agenda uh, that the county is now contributing 31,500 as is extension and the city is being asked to contribute 30,000 a year towards this position. Um, and you can see the breakdown of, of where that money is going. But in general, this just updates the agreement to uh, include extension to a higher degree, I think, so they could increase the salary for this particular position. Thank you. So do any of you commissioners have clarifying questions about this? Commissioner Lyons? Uh, this one is for um, for Courtney. I I'm wondering if I have a a potential conflict of interest knowing someone who has applied for the position. Thank you so much for the opportunity to explain conflict of interest. So there's a difference between having an actual conflict in which you would need to recuse yourself from the vote and having input that you need to share prior to uh, decision-making with your commission. So if you have some financial benefit out of this, like say it was your wife who had applied, then you would need to recuse yourself from the vote. But if it's just somebody that you know, then when we get to that point, 
um, and we're not the ones making the decision about hiring, um, then you just let the commission know, hey, I know one of the applicants. If you want to disclose the name, um, that would be the most correct. You don't necessarily have to because it's an internal process for them. Um, we're not doing the hiring. Um, and, and it's not necessary that you disclose quite that far if you don't want to. So it is my wife. So, um, <laughs> uh, so, I, I, so I guess I will have to recuse myself from this one. Lucky <laughs> guess. You. I wasn't even, I didn't even know that. I, I, <laughs> congratulations. Um, but I, thank you for giving me the perfect opportunity to explain that. Yeah. And thanks for the clarity. I appreciate it. Yeah. I yield. Thank you. Any other questions? Clarifying questions? Okay. So next up, we'll let's let's hear a motion. Does anybody want to make a motion on resolution 5014? I'll make a motion to approve resolution 5014. <clears throat> motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. Commissioners, do you have anything you want to discuss before public comment? I would just say that this is a, a really helpful um, organization for, for our small businesses. They've done quite a bit in the last several years. I participated in a few of the Zoom classes that Katie Weaver put on during the pandemic and found them quite helpful. So just, I think it's a great, a great position and a great um, organization for our community. Thank you. I'd like to add that it's money well spent and uh, I've been very, very happy with everything that they've done today. Thank you, I yield. Yeah, I agree with both of you. So thanks for saying it. So let us open it to public comment. Does anyone from the public want to comment on resolution 5014? All right, hearing nothing. Back to us. Any comment? Nope. Roll call, please. Chair sure. Newt? Yes. Vice Chair Kale? Yes. Commissioner Freeman? Four. Commissioner Schwartz? Four. Commissioner Lyons? Stay. Okay. Motion passes. Just want to make sure Faith heard Commissioner Lyons say abstain for the record. Okay, thank you. Next up on the agenda is Resolution 5015, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Livingston, Montana, authorizing the City Manager to sign a Memorandum of Understanding with Park County and Montana State University Extension to fund the MSU Economic Development Agent with ARPA funds for three years. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So while very similar, this is actually a separate issue. Um, as several of the commissioners have mentioned, this is a very uh, productive position in the community and it's been received really good feedback from a lot of the business owners, uh, especially small, small business owners. Um, one of the major drawbacks or one of the, I guess, concerns that we got regularly was that uh, there wasn't enough outreach or enough information that got to the businesses. Um, it relies heavily on the businesses to go to the extension office for the information or at least to search for it. Um, this is a, um, an effort to make it easier for the businesses by adding another economic development agent. So it would be a second position, very similar to the one that he uh, did up to this point, but it would be more focused on outreach to the businesses, um, maybe actually going around to the businesses or um, doing that communication piece to make sure that the businesses know what businesses around the county know what is available, and then also helping to uh, facilitate some of the programs. Um, this came before the commission um, late fall, early winter, I think. Um, and the commission at that time agreed to uh, provide 120,000 over three years. Uh, this is just the formal agreement with MSU and Park County to formalize what uh, the commission had done earlier as far as um, uh, earmarking the money for this particular uh, economic development agent. Uh, outside of that, the actual execution agreement is is very close to the to the other one, but it will just add a little more capacity to the economic uh, development division 
of extension and allow them to hopefully help our businesses more as we go forward. Thank you. Are there any questions on this one? Oh, Commissioner Lyons. Uh, this is for you again, Courtney. I, I don't see the same conflict here, but I'd love your input. So this is a second position. Um, and if this is not the position that your spouse is applying for, uh, then there's no economic benefit to you and you don't need to recuse. Um, but if she's applying for a position in the same um, organization, it would be appropriate for you to let the commission know that. Um, and you can still vote on it because the outcome of your vote doesn't uh, have an impact for you financially. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? No, I yield. Thank, Thank you. you. And then Vice Chair Kiel. I'm wondering, um, this is saying that we're, we're, we're um, using ARPA funding for this. Is this because we this was discussed previously earlier or later last, or last year, um, is this from the first round of ARPA funding or this current round of funding? So the first round we usually refer to as the CARES Act funding. Um, and that was that was ended last fiscal year. So this is the current round of funding, which is labeled ARPA. So this is the current ARPA funds out of the 1.889 million, I think, or 1.93 million, right in that area um, is what we, for, and I'll specify even more, what we call the bucket A ARPA funds, which are just distributed by population. Um, there's other ARPA funds that are for infrastructure needs, but this particular bucket is the one that was just distributed um, on population. So it is those specific funds that we're talking about. Do you have any other questions? Not a question, but maybe a comment. So we'll wait till later. Okay. Other commissioners, do you have technical or clarifying questions about this? Then I shall ask, um, when we've seen quotes recently for ARPA funds in the last couple months of meetings, was it accounting for the deduction of this amount because we'd already voted on it? Yes. Uh, if you look back, I think a lot of times it's, a, it's actually a line item that's subtracted from the total. Thank you. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to ask. Commissioner Lyons, you have another question? Uh, yeah, so I, I guess I'm, it's back to process um, and conflict of interest is if, if my vote isn't necessarily going to tip the scales, could I abstain for safety and propriety sake? You can abstain from any vote that you want to. It, it is one of your allowable uh, yay, nay, or abstain. You can certainly do that. Um, and if you're more comfortable doing that, um, it's, it's fine. Um, it's not required. It, if I abstain, do I still have to make that declaration before, uh, it, does this count as the declaration? Does this discussion count as the declaration? It does. You've already disclosed what you need to disclose and you don't have to disclose it every time, as long as it's been disclosed once in this meeting. Um, I want to make sure I'm answering your question to the best of my ability. Um, is it your perception that you want to be careful about doing this because of your relationship with somebody who might work there? Or do you have a concern about not understanding the difference between the conflict and the disclosure? Um, because this would be the same as any disclosure that you would want to make um, if you had spoken to somebody, if somebody had come up to you at the grocery store and said, hey, I really have this strong feeling about the economic development agent, and I want you to know that, that would be an appropriate thing to disclose here as well. Uh, I, I think I'm clear on, uh, on, the distinct, uh, on the distinction, and I guess just I don't think that it's going to be a close vote, and I feel like just... I just feel more comfortable abstaining, I think. That's me. absolutely fine. And since you get to vote last, it puts you in a perfect position for that. Great, thank you. 
Yeah, you bet. Thank you. If that's all the questions from commissioners, see no more. I'm going to open it to public comment. Any public comment on resolution 5015? No public comment. Public comments closed. Any other commission discussion on this resolution? I I have a comment. Um, Go ahead. Just quickly. Um, I'm glad to know that this was voted on a while ago and that, you know, looking at the ARPA funds from what we were told we received, that 120000 was taking, taken out of it off the top. So that's, you know, we're looking at the, the right amount of money. But I think it also brings up the thought about distribution of the ARPA funds. I know that there's other organizations and groups that maybe are starting to request funds for certain things. And I know that the commission in the past has discussed potentially an ad, another ad hoc committee to help decide on that. Um, so might might make sense that we soon start to discuss how what that process might look like. Thank you, and um, I'll just chime in and say, I think that this is a effective program that's working well, and we get a lot of positive feedback from business owners and the community about this position. So I'm really glad to see that it's actually expanding um, and hopefully we can re reach more businesses in need in Park County, um, especially with the partnership with MSU chipping in funds on the last, um, the last resolution we voted on. And we have only heard public feedback about processes for um, how we might consider ARPA funds. So the commission has not discussed that yet, but that could be something that we could discuss if we put it on an agenda, a future event agenda. But we've heard comments, I think, from the public. I know I have. All right, so if nothing else from the commission, we're gonna vote on approval of resolution 5015. Roll call, please. Oh no, not roll call. We didn't do a motion, yeah. Yeah, I moved it. I did that order, sorry. We did public comment first, but so I need a motion for um, resolution 5015. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 5015. Second. So motion by Kale and a second by Friedman. And now we may vote. Roll call, please. Chair News? Yeah. Vice Chair Kale? Yes. Commissioner Friedman? Four. Commissioner Schwartz? Four. Commissioner Lyons? Motion passes. Next on the agenda is resolution 5016, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Livingston, Montana, amending the fees for some business licenses and implementing a business license for retail marijuana sales. Mr. Cardus. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So this is pretty much just some administrative changes, although it does change some amounts of fees. Uh, you notice on page 57, we update the address to the new city hall. So it has the correct address in the ordinance. And then for the actual um, fees themselves, you will only see three changes um, due to the all beverage license, uh, which is going from $406.25 to $420. Um, the all beverage for veterans organizations, which is going from 312.50 to 325.00. And then at the bottom, you can see there is an at, oh, no, you were there. Okay. Sure. Uh, uh, the marijuana retail, that is a new license since there was no uh, business license for marijuana in the, um, in the past, we are now setting that um, license fee at $420. So uh, 420 for all beverage, 420 for marijuana and 325 for the all beverage veterans organization. Thank you. Any clarifying questions for staff? Seeing none, it is time for a motion on resolution 5016. <coughs> 
Oh, geez, I guess I'll make a motion on resolution 5016. Six. Second. So a motion by Schwartz and a second by Friedman. And we will open it to public comment. Is there anyone here that wants from the public that wants to give comment on resolution 5016? I can't believe how quiet these meetings are. This one and the last one. All right, public comments closed. Commissioners, you're up. Does anybody want to talk talk more about this? Is there any distinction between medical and recreational in this business license? Medical doesn't necessarily have to apply. Um, no, it's for all retail sales and we're treating everybody the same um, in the same way that we're treating everybody the same uh, with the smoking, uh, the tobacco and the alcohol uh, for purposes of zoning. Um, we're trying to keep it simple and straightforward and, and not create um, different fee schedules for different uh, kinds of businesses, um, as long as they're retail. Any other questions? Gary or Vice Chair Q? Okay. I'm mostly curious why the numbers were so precise <laughs> before 406.25 and 312.50. So I can't verify this. This is just my best guess. My assumption is it was based off a percentage of the state license fees. And so when you do a percentage, it comes out to a decimal. In this case, it's just easier to round it off. So I think it's easier for the city and for the businesses to just have a nice round number. Thanks, that makes a lot of sense. All right, anything else? Otherwise we're ready to vote. All right, roll call, please. Chair News. Four. Vice Chair Keogh. Yes. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. We're all the way to action items now. Action item A. Discuss, approve, deny authorization of the chair to sign the certified local government grant application for 2022 through 2023 from the Montana State Historical Preservation Office. Mr. Carters. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is something that's an annual um, application for a grant from the Montana Historical Society. Um, you'll see it's for a CLG coordinator that's the certified local government coordinator. Basically, this is for um, municipalities that have um, historic preservation commission committees, and it's um, some funding to help uh, offset the cost of uh, staff that that support the historic preservation committee. In this case, our staff is Matthew. He is the one that the money will go towards uh, his salary uh, because he attends all the historic preservation um, commission meetings, as well as helps with the zoning and the downtown requirements in the historic districts. So this is just our certification or our application um, to the Montana Historical Society to request the funding according to that grant. Thank you. Do y'all have any um, questions, follow-up questions about process or technical questions for staff? <laughs> nope. All right, so motion, time for a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve authorization of the chair to sign the certified local government grant application for 2022-2023 from the Montana State Historical Preservation Office. I'll second. Motion by Kill, second by Lyons. And now we will discuss. Do any of you have anything you want to discuss before public comment? Seeing nothing, I'll open it to public comment. Is, is anyone from the public want to give public comment on action item A?
I am just going to check with Faith because I see somebody spinning in audio mode to see if there's anything in the chat. Nope. Okay. Right. So public comment is closed. Back to the commission. Any comment before we vote? Roll call, please. Chair Newt. Four. Vice Chair Kim. Four. Commissioner Freeman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. Thank you all. Now we're, we are to our city manager comments portion of the evening. Mr. Carter's. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, I really don't have a lot for you this evening. Um, we're continuing forward with the fire chief um, interview process. We had another candidate that we interviewed today. Um, we have a couple more lined up over the coming weeks. Uh, hopefully we can make an offer to a candidate um, mid-February, early March um, is our is our process or our, our goal right now for that process. Um, outside of that, uh, the only other thing we're doing is we're continuing forward with the um, county compact rewrites. Uh, I met with the county, so that process will move forward here shortly. Um, we'll take both commissions to move forward as we update that document and uh, try to get all of the agreements back under the compact. And uh, we are still working on the um, hybrid meeting room between the county and the city. Uh, right now, I am talking to the county and IT specifically on what kind of assisted listening um, systems we could put into the, the room, whether that's a, um, a Wi-Fi streaming issue for people to use their smartphones, Bluetooth to their hearing aids or the T-coil uh, hearing aid system. So there's several assisted or RF transmitters. So we're just going through the, the pair mutations that we'll see, we can try and figure out the best um, to reach the most hearing disabled residents for the least amount of money, because uh, some of the systems are fairly expensive. Uh, that's just a quick update on things that are going on. Thank you. Now we'll move into commissioner comments. Commissioner Lyons, you're up first. Uh, I yield. I don't have anything. Thank you. Next is Commissioner Schwartz. Um, man, so early in the year, um, I um, I have nothing. I yield. <laughs> Thank you. Next is Commissioner Friedman. Uh, this weekend, my beautiful wife and myself are celebrating our 57th wedding anniversary, and I'm only 60, and I haven't figured it out yet. So it's been a great ride, and we've been very fortunate, and we got a beautiful family. So couldn't ask for more. And a good commission. Congratulations. Congratulations. Big deal. Yeah. Next up, Vice Chair Kiel. Congratulations, Commissioner Friedman. That's so lovely. Um, and to your lovely wife. I I don't know that I have anything this evening either. That's all right. It's a quiet group. Um, I want to confirm just to make sure we're all on the same page with the executive session that's coming up and just confirm the day and time make sure we have it all on our schedule. Mr. Cardus, can you confirm what faith scheduled for us? Um, we're pulling up the calendar. I believe it's 20, the 24th at 1 p.m. But I will verify that shortly. Thank you. And I want to thank you all, commissioners, for being open to scheduling these kinds of meetings in a new way with this doodle poll. I think it's a good use of our time when we can just get in an email and respond to those instead of always doing it at meetings. So thank you for that. And also, um, I want to thank city staff for always being here and coming to 
meetings to answer our questions. Not all city councils and commissions have city attorneys and city staff that attend meetings. So they don't always get answers in real time. And I'm very grateful that we have all these folks coming to help us on the spot. So thank you for that. It's a great benefit to our community and to the commission to have you here. And that is all I have. So I wanna make sure the time is verified before we go. 24th, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And it's executive session with, we won't be taking action or voting on anything. So there's no public comment portion of the meeting. It's just all closed. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. It, and it is at City Hall. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That's important. That's an important detail. <laughs> Thanks for, for clarifying that. So we are to adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Come on, Mel. <laughs> Make a motion that we end the meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? This living meeting, Madam Chair. What's that? Good meeting, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. This Livingston City Commission meeting is adjourned at 6.52. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. I know.